What's going on everybody? Tyler Brandt once again here talking Patriots football and talking a new year. So of course it's 2020 and that means that playoff football is finally here. Sad to see football go, but this is when the games mean the most. And for Patriot fans like you and me, we're no strangers to this. But this year is going to look a little different due to the, let's call it Miami Meltdown 2.0. Last week losing 27-24 at home to the Dolphins. It's looking like a different road, and it's going to be a very tough road for the Patriots to make it to a Super Bowl. As because of that loss, they are playing wild card weekend against a team that I don't really want to see, and that is the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Patriots come into this game finishing their season at 12-4. and four. The Tennessee Titans, I believe, are 9-7, and seven, so the Patriots were three games better. Whether that is due to their soft regular season, at least the first half of the regular season, for whatever reason, it's the records, you could throw them obviously out the window because it's the playoffs, because really going into this game, Tennessee has been playing better football. I mean, when you break it down, they are playing a lot better football. The Patriots, no matter the good, the bad, the ugly, no matter who you want to blame it on, they're 4-4 four and four in their last eight games. Those are games against the Texans. Those are games against the Chiefs. Those are games against the Ravens. Those all three games you lose, the Miami game meltdown, regardless of how you get here, they're here and they're 4-4. Four and four. And there's nothing they can do about that. And they're playing a Tennessee team that is 5-3 and three on the road, 4-4 four and four at home, so they can travel very well. And really the, the strength of that Tennessee team is the running game and the defense, and they travel well. I mean, historically, defenses travel well in the playoffs. Running games travel well in the playoffs. I mean, it's Super Bowl 53. That's practically how New England won a Super Bowl. And I just don't think that New England's one of the best teams in the AFC. I truly don't. And they're gonna really going to need a miraculous run, and they're going to have to get a lot better very, very fast for them to have a realistic shot at playing in a Super Bowl this year. So you all know the story with Tennessee this season. They start, they beat the piss out of Cleveland in Cleveland, and, you know, Mariota fizzles out kind of in the beginning of the season. They put in Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill, in the last 11 games, plays exceptional football, leads Tennessee to a 7-4 and record as the starting quarterback, I believe he's completing over 70% of his passes. Um, it's 22 touchdowns to 6 interceptions, which is fantastic. They average substantially more yards per play. He's averaging almost 10 yards an attempt, a completion, really. Uh, a QBR of over 70, over 60, excuse me, a passer rating of over 115. He's been very good. And the thing is, too, with Tannehill coming into this game, he's played New England. He has a history against New England, a history that isn't all that bad. I mean, 15 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. That's Those numbers aren't great. He has a, an 84 passer rating against New England. Granted, have the defense has been historically great. Like, this one is no, but historically great means nothing. I mean, Stephon Gilmore got toasted by Devontae Parker last week. So, I, I, I don't know. It's just... Uh, it's a bad guy to play knowing who's been in this building and he knows how to win... He's won in this building. He's won in Miami. So it is it is a little bit... It's it's an interesting matchup, and I don't think it's one that New England's going to run away with. Now, good or bad, no matter how you feel about Tannehill, the real issue here is going to be Derrick Henry. That's the beginning and the end of what Tennessee can do and how they can hurt you. He finishes this season as the rushing leader. He has over 1,500 yards on 303 carries. Fantastic. 16 total touchdowns. Fantastic. He is an exceptional, exceptional running back. And New England, you look at the defense, they have been gashed by very good running backs all year long. If you break it down statistically, 4.2 yards per carry, that's what the defense gives up. That's not the worst. It's actually not that bad at all. However, when you kind of take a deeper dive at it, Nick Chubb is at 131 yards. Baltimore's whole offense ran for over 200 yards. Joe Mixon ran for, what was it, over 130 yards against his team just a few weeks ago. So they are susceptible to giving up big chunk plays to very good running backs. And that's exactly what Derrick Henry is. And he's been running like a man possessed. And that, I think, is going to be the most interesting and most intriguing part of this matchup is Tannehill can beat you with his arm if you let him. And he's proven that at least this season. But Derrick Henry is an absolute problem. And I'm not sure that this defense can 
really stop him. I, I'm not sure if they have an answer to him. And even looking further out into this offense, he's flanked by some very, very good wide receivers. Now, again, talking the wide receivers for Tennessee, are they superstars? No, not by any stretch. Do they have a Julio Jones? Do they have a DeAndre Hopkins? Absolutely not. But here's the thing. Rookie A.J. Brown has, in Week 17 now, passed the 1,000-yard mark in his rookie season. Fantastic rookie season. He's got eight touchdowns, I believe. Uh, and he's been he's been very, very good. He's been on fire as of late, which, in theory, wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, we've seen Stephon Gilmore absolutely take Amari Cooper out of a game. We've seen him take DeAndre Hopkins out of a game. But looking at last week, I don't know if it was his head. I don't know if it was how Miami played. He got torched by a guy that is just as good. Uh, if not, A.J. Brown has a little bit better intangibles as a guy like Devontae Parker. So there was an issue it was a lot of the day he was in man coverage with him, although the defense was in his zone most of the day, which was is, is another conversation for a different day. And then beyond that, so you look past A.J. Brown, you have Corey Davis, who's starting to come into his zone over 600 yards this year. And then the other person who's burnt New England a few times before, and that's John U. Smith, the tight end, who's stepped up very nicely, very admirably for Delaney Walker, who's been out all season. And he's got himself just over 400 yards and a few touchdowns himself. So don't sleep on this receiving core. Just because they don't have a superstar, they are a very, very good team. They, they have a good core of wide receivers. And if you don't take them seriously, they're going to hurt you. I mean, it, it's look at Kansas City. They, they put up, what was it, 30-plus on Kansas City. You know, they've... They put the bricks to a Texans team that wasn't trying last week, but you don't get 7-4 and four and you don't put up the numbers Tannehill, Tannehill has with an average receiving core. Now, finally, this is the part that, that creeps me out and makes me very skeptical most, if anything, is the last time New England played this very same, very, very similar Tennessee Titans team was, of course, in 2018 in the regular season. They went to Tennessee and they lost 34-10. They got steamrolled. It wasn't close. Now, granted, that's over a year ago at this point. So, can you, how much eggs, how much weight can you put into that? Not, I'm not sure how much. But the thing that was a little alarming in that game was Jonu Smith, Corey Davis, and Derrick Henry all scored in the game. Derrick Henry scored twice. So, these guys have seen some of the personnel and some of the defense that New England runs. And they've had no problem moving the ball on them. And just looking back at some history with New England, in this Brady-Belichick era, they have never won a Super Bowl as a wild card team, and it doesn't look like they are going to even get to the Super Bowl if we're being candid about this team. Now, the last time they were in a wild card game, they did host the game, and they got absolutely steamrolled. Again, kind of a common narrative. They got steamrolled by Tennessee last year. The last time they were in the wild card game, they got steamrolled by Baltimore. If you don't remember, they were up 24 nothing before New England scored. That was the game Ray Rice went crazy. It, it just, there's a lot to this game that doesn't, I, I don't think it's going to be a cakewalk by any stretch of the imagination. Tennessee's got a ton of momentum. They, they beat Houston going in while the Patriots... Melted down in a home game to Miami. They let Ryan Fitzpatrick throw for 300 yards just a week ago. So I, I, I don't know. I'm not very confident. Now, I know Vegas has this line at the Patriots at four, four and a half. I've seen it as big as five, five and a half. If I'm a better, if I'm putting my money down, I'm not, I'm not going to bet the Patriots cover that spread. I think this is going to be a close game. I think the Patriots lose close. And then even the money line, which... I've seen for plus 200 and even a little more, I'm not, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Tennessee won. Uh, if, I'm a, if I'm a betting man, I, I might throw a couple dollars on that 200 money line because I'm not confident that this New England team is that much better this season than the Tennessee Titans. I really don't. And, and if that's the case, then they'll be going golfing pretty early into the offseason, and that's not usual for Patriot fans, and that's not usual for the Patriots, but... This could be a, a humbling that this team may need, which is a conversation that we'll definitely have in the future. But that is pretty much everything you need to know about this playoff matchup with the Tennessee Titans. It is Saturday evening is the playoff matchup. So buckle in, folks. It's going to be a very, very good game. It's going to be a very close game. Both of these teams are very good. 
Mike Vrabel, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick. I mean, there's former and, of course, current Patriots all over that are going to make big plays and have big impacts on this game. And I got I got my fingers crossed. Listen, I, I want New England to pull it out. I'm rooting for them. I think they can win this game, and they very well might win this game. But don't be surprised if Tennessee wins. They do a lot of things that New England struggles with very well. Derrick Henry's on fire. He's not the rushing leader for a reason. It's not a fluke. So would I be shocked if New England loses this game in their own building on Wild Card Weekend? I wouldn't. Let's hope they win. Let's go, Pats Nation. We're going to need to be there for them. Everyone in the stadium is going to need to keep the plays rocking. And good luck, and I'll talk to you on another video. Oh, also, I'm not very good at this self-promotion thing. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, on Twitter... I'm at the Tyler Brandt. It's very simple, just like kind of the YouTube channel here. If you want to follow me on Facebook, uh, the uh, I'm just Tyler Brandt. Look me up. And also, this isn't the only content I do. I also do a radio show called First in Sports with my co-host Bobby. And if you want to listen to that, I'll put a link down below. If you would like to take a listen, we talk about more than a lot more than just Patriots. We talk. He's a Giant fan, so we talk Giants. We talk NFL, NBA, MLB. We kind of we have a lot of fun. It's more free-formed. It's, you know, a lot longer, so we get to really dive into other stuff. But that is it, like I said, for now, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Let's go, Pats. Let's beat the Titans, and let's take this thing to Kansas City, huh? Talk to you next time.